This is a tutorial on the Cyclonic Shapeshifter uh, made by IntelliGel. I received this module not too long ago and found it quite complicated and thought, hey, what's the best way to learn this? Maybe I'll make some tutorials where I have to explain how things are working. Anyway, that's the idea. Um, I'm going to go through this uh, and do several different tutorials, I imagine, um, covering the ins and outs of, of a lot of the features. It's a pretty complex module, um, and uh, I thought maybe the best place to start in this would be the place that I started first when I first got it, and that was to make a sort of default setting, uh, something that I could return to. Every time I turn on the system, it would reset to the same um, exact settings that I, I knew would be there, and from that point, I could make something that was more interesting and more complicated. And for me, uh, the most basic default sort of setting would be to have uh, sine waves coming out of the oscillators. So this is a pretty complex instrument that we have in front of us, it has a lot of features, um, and I'm not going to go over what they do in this tutorial, I'm simply going to explain how to reset the module in such a way that out of output 1 here, we have a sine wave, and out of output 2 here, we have a sine wave. And that's pretty much it. Um, as it stands now, the module is sort of scrambled. I've, I've intentionally made it pretty wacky sounding, so I'm going to start it up right now and show you where it's at. So, if I were to plug into output 1 here, and take a listen to it. Pretty gritty uh, stuff going on there. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's happening because if I just turn this on and this was what I heard, I would be a little confused, right? And maybe you felt that way if you are um, first using this module. Well, this tutorial should help. So let's go about resetting this whole module back to a very simple two oscillator sine wave generator, okay? So to start with, let's go ahead and look at the knob positions here, right? These are um, some knob positions. I'll go ahead and put up a, a picture of the patch I'm gonna be making. Uh, you can take a, a look at it, maybe pause the video and now we're going to go through and just set those knob positions. I'll explain very briefly what I'm doing, but um, for example, turning down the ratio and the internal frequency modulation will turn off any sort of frequency modulation that's going on, uh, as well as turning off the internal sync here and the quantization. Both features, all these features that I'll, I'll talk about later. Uh, in terms of the fine tuning and the coarse tuning, I just kind of like to set that in the middle um, because I'm not really tuning this exactly right now. I just put it in a nominal position in the middle. Uh, the shape knobs, both shape 1 and shape 2, they determine the place in the wavetable that the um, module is accessing. So if we set this all the way to hard left, that's the, the very first wavetable in the set, and there are eight wavetables, they're lined up, so by putting it all the way to the left, we're accessing wavetable number one, which in the, the end goal of this is gonna be a sine wave for both of these. The fold output here is set high, and we'll just turn that all the way down low. We're not gonna use that in here, but it's nice just to have that turned down. Uh, in addition, there's this LFO mode, which turns oscillator uh, one and oscillator two into a low frequency oscillator. You can see it's set to make oscillator two into this LFO setting. If you cycle through this, we'll go to oscillator one and then both of them. It's just kind of nice to turn them off. Um, but this is up to you. I like to just have them off. Um, you'll notice that percussion mode is also off. You'll have to press that twice to get back to off. Chord mode, also off. Okay, now you're probably seeing stuff flash up here in the LCD display, which is a bit confusing because there's a lot of settings that are accessible um, via these buttons on the side, the left and the right side here, as well as the panel in the middle um, that have settings that display here. And this sort of helps you get them up right away, change them, and then you press another button and you can access some other settings. So this doesn't tell us the whole story. This is just showing the, the last accessed um, button and setting. So in general, these buttons on the left here 
will control this top line of the LED display where it says Molt 1 and it's at a setting of 4. And these buttons on the right will control the bottom display, which is saying combo mode set to ring modulation, right? Okay. So I'm going to just go from top to bottom, left to right, and go through each one of these buttons and set them to a default setting, okay? So pressing this top one that says Wave Bank, you'll see that it says 1, which means this is Oscillator 1's Wave Bank, and it's set to the Wave Bank that's titled Bit Crush number 4, right? So we'll use the encoder here and just rotate that and choose, I missed it, I'm going to choose Basic 1. That's our basic waveforms uh, wavetable, right? And within this, there's eight different waveforms, wavetables, and they are your basic waveforms, such as sine, triangle, sawtooth, square wave, ramp, etc. Uh, those are all accessible via the shape button. So as you move this, you'll get different waveforms, right? Very cool. That's why you bought this module. Um, Having it hard left right here will give us a sine wave, okay? If we press the wave bank button one more time, you'll see it changes to oscillator two and it's wave bank, right? So it's set to something else. Let's go ahead and set that to um, basic one as well, right? So now I can cycle back and forth and see oscillator one and two are both set to basic one. Good, let's move to the sync and pulse settings. If I press this once, it shows the synchronization options, right? And this is how oscillator one is synced either to the sync input or to oscillator two. Um, in any case, it's set to hard sync, and we want to just turn that off, which we can do with the encoder, changing that to sync off. If we press it one more time, it will take us to the pulse settings. And these are the pulse outputs down here, right? You can see pulse. Um, on either side, these will light up, and there is a pulse output right here. Right now, it's currently set to an AND, and I'll go over what that means exactly, but we'll just set that to, as you turn it, we'll set it to END OF CYCLE, EOC. Moving down to mod A here. This is a, a little confusing. There's a number of ways you can uh, add some modulation to the mod to the module here um, through this mod a input right here um, through this you can do vocoding and phase modulation and all sorts of very very cool stuff uh, we want to just set that to phase two um, pressing uh, let's see chord type multi right if we press this button it will show the multi mode and this is a little confusing just for now for multi one. This is multi on oscillator one. We're going to set that to one. And I press it again for oscillator two. And we'll just again set that to one. This makes sure that we're just accessing the sine wave only and not the full sweep of this knob. Um, if that sounds confusing, I'll explain that later. Moving on to the right side here, we can press combo mode. Combo mode, you can see the cursor drops to the bottom line here, is set to ring modulation, which is not what we want to do right now. We want to actually choose oscillator one, which just gives us a straight oscillator output. It doesn't do any fancy combinations of oscillator one and two. If we click on tilt drive, you can see we have our tilt setting is set to 46, and tilt is a type of uh, wave shaping distortion uh, function. We want to turn that all the way down, of course, like that. Um, you'll notice, too, if you press the tilt button again, that it, uh, and, and these buttons on the side all do this. They'll say like a shortened version of the name, tilt, T-I, and then this like zero, uh, zero, zero, and then a plus or minus number here. This plus or minus number is actually this, this knob right here, mod B is the name of it. And you can see as I turn it, it will change that plus or minus number to uh, something else, right? So I want to set that just to right in the middle here. And um, if you're seeing this on the display, press tilt and drive one more time, just so it says the full word tilt. Basically, it's disabling this knob, okay? More on that later. Click on delay, and you can see here's our uh, delay or echo parameter. We're going to set that to zero. 
Again, if you press delay one more time, it kind of looks similarly to before, plus or minus number. That's just saying that mod B is this knob is set to modify the delay. We, we don't want to do that yet, so I'll press delay one more time. So press that. And then same with the detune parameter. We'll turn that all the way off. So if we've done this correctly, we should be getting a very simple sine wave output on uh, output one here on oscillator one, sorry. So let's turn it up in here. Yep, that's what we're getting. And if we switch over and listen to oscillator two, should be another sine wave, just a little bit lower. Oh shoot. So we did something wrong. The reason for that is these bottom knobs here. And you might've encountered this uh, where you feel like you're doing everything right, but uh, something is still happening that's not quite uh, the way you think it would work. So um, this top row of uh, inputs here are sent directly to these attenuator knobs, which do a variety of functions, but essentially these are all the modulation possibilities. Um, and you can see I have nothing plugged in right now, and yet there's some sort of modulation happening. And the type of modulation I can tell you, uh, if we were to click on mod A here, we're doing phase modulation on oscillator two, and that kind of makes sense when we listen to this. So the reason we're getting that um, is because we have this set to phase uh, modulation on oscillator two, and yet we don't have anything plugged into the mod A input, right? This attenuator knob is up, um, but nothing is plugged in, and it might be, uh, I'll unplug this so you can see it, there's a little graphic here that explains exactly what's happening. The output of oscillator one is normaled to go to both the fold input, you can see a little arrow connecting it to fold, meaning that I can directly access oscillator one out of fold here, um, and it's also normal to go into mod input A. So that's exactly what's happening. Oscillator one is going to mod input A, which is phase modulating oscillator two. Whoa, right? So what we wanna do is just turn down the attenuator for mod A, and I'll show you by plugging into output two here, and turning this attenuator down. Just like that. We might as well go ahead and turn all of these down these are just attenuators, and um, it's just best to have them down. That way you have total control of what's happening. So now that we have that squared away, we understand what's going on. Let's go ahead and save this preset, so then when I restart my system, it will come up as the default setting, right? And that's the whole idea here. So we need to enter preset mode, and you do that by pressing in on the encoder here which turns on that red light and means that all of these red um, text uh, indicators on the left here are now active. So if I press uh, the top button, it says save, uh, we'll press that once and you can see we're on user preset one. So press that once and it says, do you wanna save on user preset one? No, that's kind of not what we wanna do. We do wanna save it, of course. So save yes, we'll press that to confirm it. So now it's saved on user preset one. We can exit preset mode by pressing the encoder. And just to prove it to you, I'll turn off the module, turn it back on. And now when we take a listen to the output of oscillator one, we should have a clean sine wave. And oscillator two should sound the same. And just like that, we have a default patch from which we can build much more complex patches and it'll make the whole tutorial se uh, series a lot more easy to understand, just knowing that we can start from a place of uh, reference and then build upon that. So thanks for watching and uh, see you in another tutorial.